Another example of a mass in a liver. This mass shows spoke and wheel pattern, and this spoke and wheel pattern is typical of focal nodular hyperplasia. A very large patient came for renal ultrasound, and this large patient came with ultrasound, and incidentally we identified a hypoechoic mass in the lower pole of the right kidney. And if you see, look at this carefully, you don't see much of an acoustic enhancement behind this mass. So we went and we did power Doppler, and power Doppler identified areas of increased vascularity, and this was subsequently proven to be a renal carcinoma. Another patient who presented for renal ultrasound, and during the examination, incidentally, we identified this soft tissue mass in the bladder. We apply color Doppler. It's avidly vascular there, so the patient did not have hematuria. Nonetheless, it, she was taken for cystoscopy and biopsy proven transitional carcinoma that was asymptomatic. As I said earlier, color Doppler can help you in your practice to identify and stage pancreatic cancer. And this is a nice example of a pancreatic cancer encasing the SMA, the celiac axis in this instance, and the SMA. You can see the soft tissue mass surrounding the celiac axis. Another area where resectivity can help is evaluating cholangiocarcinomas. As you know, cholangiocarcinomas are not easy to identify. It's even with CT scan, MRI may have an advantage, but ultrasound can identify the vasculature and its relation to the tumor. Look at the tumor sitting here, and you have more than one sectorial duct dilated, and you can see the relationship of the tumor and the thickened common duct. It's close to the hepatic artery, but most of the time it's not invading the artery. The sign here, the presence of two, more than two sectorial ducts indicate that this tumor is not resectable. This is the MRI of the same patient, and you can see the thickened common bile duct indicating the presence of the tumor. Again, you can also look at the aorta and the IVC with color Doppler, which is, should be evaluated properly during your abdominal exam because you can identify pathology that was, is not suspected. Now, the most in common indication is you look at the aorta for the presence of triple A or aortic aneurysms. In our practice, we feel that clinicians and vascular surgeons feel happy if we give them information about the perfusion of both kidneys by color Doppler above the level of the aneurysm when we identify it. Now, this is an important way to, important uh, hint here. Whenever you evaluate the aorta, make sure you have the right settings of your scale and frequency. And in this instance, you have a lot of aliasing in this aorta. There is an aneurysmal dilatation. But if there is a dissection, you can easily miss that. And you adjust your scale, and that scale can help you confine your color signal to the lumen. And you can get rid of the aliasing. And if there's any abnormality to the flow or two lumens, you should be able to identify that with ease. Another example is the IVC. You can look at the IVC and you can easily be misled sometimes if you start with color Doppler. This is an example where color override can miss the diagnosis of thrombosis. Look at this slide. You see color Doppler nicely filling the lumen here. And honestly, if you get this still image by itself, you would easily say everything is fine because you don't see much expansion in the venous lumen. But when you look at the grayscale, the grayscale showed an echogenic material within that IVC, and that is consistent with a clot that you can e easily miss if you overwrite that clot with color Doppler. Now, other important clinical applications with color Doppler, you can use it for acute polynephritis. You can look for the presence of jets in the bladder. In patients with hydronephrosis, you can distinguish what is biliary duct from hepatic arteries, portal veins. You can use the artifacts, as we mentioned, to your advantage, the CCTA or the twinkling artifact, and also color aliasing. Now, acute polynephritis, the diagnosis can easily be made by urine test. However, many times patients present with flank pain or right upper quadrant pain, and they need to distinguish that from gall gallbladder disease. So what are the features? You can get a focal or diffuse process, may mimic a mass lesion, 
Now remember, most of the time it's going to be high hyperechoic area and not hypoechoic area. In other words, it's going to be a bright area in the kidney affected rather than a dark area. And then you can may get some urethelial thickening if there's some hydro. And color Doppler, of course, will demonstrate evidence of devoid signal in that area involved with inflammation and infection. So this is an example of an acute pyonephritis. You look at the kidney. The kidney echogenicity is similar to that of the liver in its most parts, except when you come to this portion in the inner polar to the upper pole of that kidney and makes you worry that there might be evidence of acute pyonephritis. And this is the power Doppler, and you can see the power Doppler is filling nicely the kidney except for this same area, and that's how you make the diagnosis of acute pyonephritis. Color Doppler can help us also evaluate for the presence of jets in the bladder from the ureters. Now, keep in mind the following. If both are absent, there is no clinical significance. When both are present but asymmetrical, it may be significant, but most of the time there may be nothing to go and identify. The most important point here is if one is present and the other one is absent. Now, how much time do you need to wait to establish whether you can see the jets or not? All right, time varies, but sometimes you may have to wait 10 minutes to be able to establish that a jet does not exist or does not present on one or, other or the other side. The other thing is, if you don't have a jet on one side, just go and check the kidney and save yourself the time. You may identify the cause behind that absence of the jet. An example is, as in this slide, we see a nice jet coming from one side. There's no jet from the right side. We go on the same right side and we can identify hydronephrosis in the right kidney. So here we managed to identify the reason why we do not have a jet because the kidney is obstructed, there's a blockage, there has to be a reason for the absence of that jet. Biliary dilatation, you can easily apply color Doppler and make sure that any cystic structure that is not filling with color and you know its anatomic course, which is important, is most likely a bile duct. So in conclusion, we managed to go and cover the color Doppler applications of the abdomen and we need to keep in mind that always include color Doppler evaluation during your abdominal exams regardless of the indication. Know and be familiar with the most common pitfalls to avoid them. Spend time optimizing your machine parameter and always think where do I need to look next and please never aspirate or drain any lesion anywhere in the abdomen if, even if you're 100% sure that this thing is non-vascular without applying color Doppler. And thank you for your time and attention.